Hello friends, welcome. In this video, I'll be discussing the performance standards for the EPUB emergency position indicating radio beacon. I'll try to keep it in a sequence so that it is very easy for you to remember. So let's get started. So EPUB is basically a radio beacon which gives the position in case of an emergency. How it works is very simple. This is a radio beacon on board the ship which can be activated manually or in case the ship sinks and people do not get the opportunity to activate it, it gets activated automatically once it touches the water. The signal goes to the satellite. Satellite sends the signal to the local user terminal. Then it goes to the mission control center and to the rescue coordination center. Once the rescue coordination center receives this EPUB distress signal, they know that the ship is in a distress situation. Either the ship has already sunk or it may sink very soon. So something so important has a certain performance standards. And let's go through them now. So this is how the EPUB is installed on board a ship. It is mostly on the bridge wings or on the monkey island. The basic idea is that if the ship sinks, then the radio beacon will get clear from the ship. And this is one of the performance standards for the EPUB. That it should have a local manual activation. Remote activation may also be possible from the navigation bridge. And the device should be installed in the float free mounting. Then it should be designed to release itself float free before reaching a depth of 4 meters at any list or trim of any angle. Many of you already know that the hydrostatic release unit gets activated when it goes underwater from 3 to 4 meters. And this is one of the performance standard of the EPUB. Then the third standard which is very obvious is that it should be capable of operating properly over a range of shock and vibration and other environmental conditions which are normally encountered above deck on seagoing conditions. So these are the first three points related to storage that should be able to handle all kind of vibration and shocks. It should be mounted in a way that it can float free before it goes into a depth of 4 meters and local manual activation or remote activation should be possible. Now as I remove this EPUB and take it in my hand, there is some labeling requirement and that is also the performance standard. So what is required for the labeling is, first there should be brief operating instructions which you can see it's there. There should be expiry date of primary battery used and the identity code programmed into the transmitter. So these three informations are required to be labeled on the EPUB. Now let me talk about some general points which are most likely similar in most of the LSA equipments like SART, EPUB, portable VHF, etc. And those points are, the first one is about this being an electrical equipment. It says that if this equipment goes into a depth of 10 meters and stays there for at least 5 minutes, it should stay watertight. Consideration should be given to a temperature variation of 45 degrees during the transit from the mounted position to immersion. Thus, the equipment should be capable of bearing this temperature variation of 45 degrees. Then the harmful effect of the marine environment, condensation, water leakage should not affect the performance of the beacon. So if you notice carefully, this point about not being affected by the marine environment has been covered in the storage part also, in this part also, then there is a separate point that should not be unduly affected by seawater or oil or both. Or again, there is another point that the equipment should be resistant to deterioration in prolonged exposure to sunlight. So just remember, not being affected by marine environment, oil, water, resistant to the effect of sunlight. This is common in most of the LSA equipment. So you can use it and remember it as a point for the performance. Then another common point where it will be something similar, maybe a little bit difference in the height. It should be capable of being dropped into the water without damage from a height of 20 meters for EPUB. Further, there are some common points are satellite EPUB should be so designed so as to operate under any of the following environmental condition. See again talking about the environment and there is always an ambient temperature range. In this case, it's minus 20 to plus 55 degrees centigrade. Plus, in case of a icing condition 
or if the relative wind speed is up to 100 knots or after stowage at a temperature between minus 30 degree to plus 70 degree. So as you can notice the stowage temperature range is a bit larger than the ambient temperature range when it should work normally. Now that I've covered the common points, let me talk about the points which you can just easily remember as soon as you have just one look on this EPUB in your mind. So first of all, it should be automatically activated after floating free. So as you can see below this, which are like terminals, in case this touches the seawater, a circuit will be complete and this will be activated. Now as you can see, the distress button is clearly marked and it has a flap. Why this flap? Because this is a requirement again. And the requirement is that EPUB is fitted with adequate mean to prevent inadvertent activation. Then the other requirement is that it should be capable of manual activation and manual deactivation. And as you can see, there is a red button to switch it on in case of distress. And there is also a grey button to switch it off in case the distress is over or you had made a mistake. Further, there is a requirement that it should be provided with a mean to indicate the signal is being transmitted. And you can see there are a number of lights which would start flashing in case this is emitting a signal. Then further, it should be capable of floating upright in calm waters, have positive stability and sufficient buoyancy in all sea conditions. So you can see the design itself. It is like quite bulky on top, which is designed in a way that will stay afloat. It will stay straight. And the reason is that it has to communicate with the satellite, which is pointing towards the sky. So it has to remain straight and thus this is one of the performance standard. Next requirement is that it should be capable of being tested without using satellite system to determine that EPUB is capable of operating properly. And here is a test button which is given and I'm going to press it now. And as you can see, this light is flashing which indicates the EPUB and its battery are ready and fine. So let's notice carefully what else can I see in this EPUB. This is of a highly visible color which is orange and thus this is one of the requirement that should be of highly visible color either yellow or orange and should be fitted with a retro reflective material and you can see both are there. Then further there should be a buoyant lanyard suitable for use as a tether which should be so arranged that to prevent it being trapped in the ship structure when floating free. And here is the lanyard which is coiled up in a way that will not get trapped anywhere or get stuck anywhere. I can just pull it out and use it whenever I want. Then the next requirement is that the light which is available on top and the performance standard for this is that it should be provided with a low duty cycle light 0.75 candela. If you remember this is also the luminous intensity for the life jacket light. And this light is provided to be active during darkness to indicate the position of survivors. In addition to the satellite signal, the EPUB should be provided with a 121.5 MHz beacon, primarily for homing by aircraft. And as you can see from the marking on EPUB, this is capable of 121.5 MHz signal. Then further, the battery which is inside the EPUB should be capable of operating for a period of at least 48 hours. If you remember for SART, it's 96 hours, which is just double of this. So that's it, here's the story. You go to the EPUB, you see the box from outside, you think about it, what should be the requirement. You open it, you think about it, what are the requirements. You go through the labels of it, then you go through the full thing which is available and think what are the requirements. And as you remember the features of an EPUB, you will automatically remember all the performance standards. And before I end this video, I'll just quickly go through the part B of the satellite signal requirement. The satellite EPUB distress signal should be transmitted on a frequency, which is 406.025 MHz using G1B class of emission. The technical characteristics of the transmitted signal and message format should be in accordance with the recommendation of the ITUR. Provision should include for storing the fixed portion of the distress message in the satellite EBUB using non-volatile memory. Then a unique beacon identification code 
should be made part of all messages until 1st Feb 1999. This identification code should include a three-digit code for the country in which the beacon is registered, followed by either the trailing six-digit of the ship station identity in accordance with the Appendix 43 of the ITU radio regulations or a unique serial number or a radio call sign. Preference is always given to method 1. And since 1999, only the trailing six digits of ship station identity is to be used. Then further, it talks about 121.5 MHz homing signal should have a continuous duty cycle except that it may be interrupted for up to maximum of 2 seconds during the transmission of 406 MHz signal. I hope it was a useful video for you. If you have any feedback, suggestion or comment, then please do write down below. All the best for exams and as always, thank you for watching.